Story Chat with John Fornoff, the art and passion of storytelling. Here's your host, Brian Bullabush. Welcome, welcome. I'm not Brian Bullabush, but I'll do my Brian Bullish. Im- no, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do his impression. He does it better than anybody. And of course, he's the real deal. So I'll just say welcome to our corner of the internet. I love how he says that. I don't know what a corner of the internet is, but it sounded impressive to me. Uh, but Brian is is out working on some kind of fabulous, amazing project with superheroes, and that's all I can tell you about. Um, but anyway, I think he'll be back next next week. But um, I want I want to just talk to you as uh, as a writer, as a, as also you're watching this or you're listening to this or however you're you're consuming this stuff. I commend you. Uh, you're 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 staying with it. Uh, there's a there's a, um, a quote I have, and I'm going to butcher my own quote, but anyway, it's a sense of there are dreamers and doers out there and the people that just dream and they don't do. And that's that's delusion. And people do, but they don't dream. And that's drudgery. But the one who dreams and does touches the divine. And that's what you're doing. You're, you're not just dreaming about writing, you're, you're doing something, you're listening to the show, you're trying to gain something, trying to grab something that's going to help you with your writing. And you know what, you're not alone. I do the same thing. I go to seminars, I read books, I'm constantly honing my craft. And that's something you I, I want to pass along too. as a beginner or a pro keep learning. If you ever stop learning, you stop growing. When you stop growing, you start dying. So um, there's some encouragement to you. <laughs> that's not really depressing, but anyway, keep growing, keep honing your craft. And that's going to gonna help you with life, going to help you with uh, your writing, that kind of stuff. So I um, hope that's helpful to you. We want to ho- uh, give you some hope and give you some help. Um, so I've got with me a very special guest. I have Robert Liparulo. And uh, Robert is has been a writer for many years now. There's Bob. There's Bob right there. And Bob is also a very good friend of mine. And I talked about this at uh, the Art of the Start, the seminar we did, how um, I have this definition of a, of a good friend. The best kind of friend, the, a, a true friend, is one who beckons you to a larger world that you didn't know existed. They see stuff you don't. That's what Bob would do with me. And that I came up with the definition thinking about Bob. Um, I was working my dream job, working in Adventures and Odyssey, which I loved. Oh, my goodness. As far as a regular job, that was the job. I mean, it was so fun. I, I remember like five years into it, putting on my tie. I couldn't wait to go to work. It's like, wow, I really must like my job. But Bob would say, there's something more for you, John. It's like, I like my cubicle. It's like, John, there's something more for you. I, there's, you've got more talent. It's not being reckoned. You, you got to get out there. It's like, but I like where I am. And he was encouraging me to a larger world. Since then, I've worked on a total of 15 audio dramas. Um, and I've written over 200 episodes. And if I had stayed there, I would have still really enjoyed it, I'm sure. But I've gotten to work on all kinds of projects and movies and stuff like that. So thank you, Bob. Bob <laughs> is a, a true friend that, that called me to a larger world. So You make well, me okay. sound like an antagonist. <laughs> I'm, I'm drawing you away from your dream job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, well Bob is a, is a thriller writer. And I'm thrilled to have him here. He he wrote uh, the Dreamhouse Kings series, which uh, was on Scholastic. It's it's an amazing you know, series. It's huge. Look it up, Dreamhouse Kings. Check it out, or check out robertlipperlo.com. Can they check that out yet, or is this, is it up and going? No, going my my website got hacked, and I'm still working on it. Okay, it will be by the time you you probably yeah one of these I, days. I'm, it's I'm be hoping up. the the problem is uh-huh. uh huh. My web guys are like, let me just put one in. It mm-hmm. won't be the one that I lost, and I want the one I lost. Oh, I got you. Yeah, so I'm. I'm like. I'm real. I'm like. No, you have to duplicate what I have, so, <laughs> and that's a lot of work. Bob also is uh, does a lot of graphic art. He's amazing. The stuff he does, a lot. It's covers of stuff are inspired by his own art. Uh, if you go to Dreamhouse Kings, how much of that did you do? By the way, we go dream DreamhouseKings.com, right? Is that where it is? Yeah. How yeah. much of that art did you do, or have something to do with, or you just in, in, inspired or influenced? Nothing actually that I drew, but I would I would draw a concept sketch. Okay, and then you and they would go from and there. Then, yeah, and Bob they, has... they, they hated me, but but you know I had a good <laughs> publisher that allowed me to have. It's considered a marketing the, the yeah. cover of a book. Yeah, and so most authors aren't even allowed to to have input on their covers. 
I was given a lot of input and I really appreciate that. Oh, you did just be just amazing work. So Bob's worked on seven acclaimed thrillers for adults. And when we say thriller, uh, you can put that word in italics. Um, when I read his books, it's like, I just keep turning the pages. Like, oh, I can't believe that happened. It is like, you got to turn the next chapter. It's like, you're keeping me up, Bob. I got to get to bed. Okay. I'll read another chapter. You know, it's like, it's good stuff. It's gripping. It's gritty and gripping. Uh, and it gives it, it a thriller in every sense of the word. Word and I, Bob, I've I have never talked to you about this. We probably need to talk like offline about it. I'll just do it right here. One of my favorite quotes about you, and I love it because it's so cool. And I I don't know if this this makes you cringe or you're okay with it, but somebody referred to Bob as C.S. Lewis with a semi-automatic, and I think that's one of the best quotes. I mean. That's just a great <laughs> quote. It's like Bob's got the, the the thinking and the thrills. So anyway, I'll stop talking about them and welcome them here to the, here to the show. Welcome to Story Chat. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. You're welcome. I mean, what about that phrase? Is that okay with you to say that? I just think that it's it's C.S. Lewis who would cringe. Oh. <laughs> Hey, you don't know what was in that pipe, man. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> he was actually like a James Bond. You didn't know he was a, he was actually working for MI6, right? <laughs> that guy was amazing. Wouldn't that be cool if we found out C.S. Lewis is actually a spy? Oh, that man, we got to do really a story. Cool. We got to do a story, man. And he planted the little clues in his, in his books. Did you have yeah. to look for well, You know, he did say that, you know, he is not a pacifist. Yeah, and, and I always like that because he would have to defend himself, you know, say, "Oh, you're you're this great theologian, this great Christian, and yet you believe that there's a time for war." Mm -hmm. And he said, I, "I love this, and don't quote me on it. This is okay. not verbatim, but it's basically," he said, "I would be a pacifist if you can convince me that a Nazi-ized Europe." would be better than the war that stopped it. Whoa, that's that sounds like a C.S. Lewis quote. What what'd you say? He, he invented the mic drop, you know? <laughs> I guess it's the book drop. I don't know what do you call it. The pen drop. <laughs> he invented the pen drop. That's right, the pen. He and Winston Churchill. There must have been something in the water. Oh, those guys. Churchill. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, okay, get me going. Um, go to the never, war room, by never, the way. Never, 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 never give up. Yes, yes, that was his whole speech for the commencement. If you ever get a chance, by the way, as a writer, you would love this. Um, you get inspired by environments. Go to this. Not many people know about this. Uh, when you, if you ever go to London, go look for the War Room, and you'll see where Churchill hung out in the in the in the bunker. And you'll see where uh, they have a WC, which in usually in London stands for water closet. Actually, is Winston Churchill, and in that <laughs> secret room is a red phone. He called FDR in the in the wc uh so anyway uh it, it, there's uh, but you can inspire by being around environments like that and it can inspire a story for you so here's what well, bob and i were talking about this earlier and i said bob what would you like to talk about and he says i want to talk about everything it's like okay that's good but we only have like 25 minutes so <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have a general topic we're gonna go for but we're, we're gonna we're going to chat. It's story chat. So we talk, right? But we wanted to give you a sense of what is it like to be a professional writer? What is it? What's the fun of it? And um, maybe it's something that, that you were surprised by. Maybe we'll, we'll find out if you're surprised or not. But um, what is it like? What's a day like in the, in the day of a, what's a day like in the day of a life of, of I'm going to try that again. <laughs> what, what is it like to live as a professional writer, make a living as a writer? What are the thrills? What are the, uh, the spills? And I talk about, I'm going to spill your drink there. What, what are the, what do we enjoy about it? What's some surprising things about it? So Bob, tell me, what, what is it like to be a professional writer? Cause you were, I mean, you had other jobs, you had other things you did. Now you're a professional writer. What, what is it like a, a typical day? What, what do you enjoy most about what you do as opposed to like a regular a regular job out there well this is a this is a little maybe a little less uh dogmatic okay um i am so thrilled that i can do the thing i love the most and get paid for it um, amen yes that's my quote I, I'm just, sorry. Yeah, just, yeah. Of course, no matter what god has put in you um I think he's, he's going to be true to that. He's going to give you the opportunities. And I think you have to 
work at honing your craft and and looking for those opportunities and and working it and doing it um but if god put in you to be a writer that's something you have to be you you pursue it and you have to be and that's what gets you through the rejections the the things that are, are difficult especially when you're starting is you know this is what you have to do you are going to die doing this and and that i can practice what i love the most is this amazing and i think that that should be true for everybody if um do you know, you if you just yeah. love tinkering and you love engineering type work if you get a job that does that you're right in that sweet spot you're in that mm-hmm. that thing that you have to do in your life <laughs> i don't know what you know whatever it is you've got to love what you're doing and for me it's writing and i just uh, that just i know that's a little bit vague or you know it's no it's good kind of big but it's it's that's <laughs> the main thing you know I, I when i'm writing i'm just like I'm getting paid to do this. I'm <laughs> okay. Yes, I can't believe. Yeah, same here. I can't believe I get paid to do this. Um, uh, my friend Kathy Buchanan, uh, an amazing writer, uh, the funniest person I know. She's amazing. Uh, she she has this phrase, which I'm not sure is grammatically correct, but anyway, she says, "I cannot not write." And right, you know exactly. what? I still get that. You got there's right. it's you got it's like it's it's a fire in you. It's a oh uh was it Jeremiah? I got a fire shut up in my bones. You know, it's that that says I got a fire shut up in my pen, I gotta get it out on the on the page, you know. And um well, you know it's an old adage. Mm-hmm. Pursue what you love and the money will follow. Yes, and I think that's true. You know, yes. pursue what you love. And I remember just I remember telling my dad, my mom. Um, everybody I knew I'm going to write for the rest of my life. And this is when I was a young teen. Wow. I may not make a lot of money. I may, you know, I may be working really hard just to make ends meet, but this is what I'm going to do. Oh, wow. And, and, and that's what I've done. So well, I'm fabulously um, wealthy, uh, doing this. And, um, I, I find that's a thrill too. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm just being sarcastic. It just comes out of me. Uh, but, but actually, I have made I have made good money. I mean, we both have actually. We made good money doing writing, and it, and it goes up and down. That's oh, there's yeah. there's part of the thrill. The thrill of writing is like it's like a roller coaster ride financially. So you've got to be wise. You've got to set aside some savings uh, because you know income goes up and down when you're on your own when you're freelancing and doing stuff like that. So be prepared for that. Well, um, it's also, it's all part of the. It comes from the same well of discipline. Mm-hmm. Be a writer. You you don't necessarily have a boss. Uh, even even when you have a contract and your publisher or your editor is quote unquote your boss, mm-hmm. uh, usually you have quite a bit of time to write. And if you don't have the discipline to sit down and write, even though something may not be due for nine months or a year, it's not going to work for you. And, yeah. and that same that same set aside some money, you know, be your own retirement fund. You, that takes discipline, but that but you have discipline if you're going to be a writer. Exactly. If you don't have a discipline, you're not going to be a writer. Exactly. Okay. That's so so well so well put. Is it that, that sometimes you just sit in the chair and you got to write? You got a deadline. Oh, one of the things I enjoy, Bob. Just I, let's just talk about some of the fun fun part of it. I love writing. I when I'm writing, and I hit a funny scene and I'm laughing. I am just enjoying it. I can't, it just, it just came to me. Like you put two characters in a room and they've got opposites and all of a sudden somebody says something surprising and he's like, that's hilarious. You know, I love when I'm laughing when I'm writing. I love <laughs> crying when I'm writing. It's like something that just grabs my heart. I remember one time I was in a coffee shop and I was writing this scene called The King's Son uh, for uh, Lifeline Audio Drama. And um, it's this very poignant scene where uh, I won't spoil it for you, but uh, the king does something and it's amazing. So there, there, there's as much as I'm going to give to you anyway. Uh, he, he does a sacrificial thing. Anyway, whatever happens, I, it all of a sudden, oh, what if he did this? And I'm writing it in this coffee shop and all of a sudden it's like it hit me and I just started crying. Oh, man, that's just like Jesus did for us. You know, I'm just weeping, you know, and I look over, there's a bunch of teenage girls over there, you know, in the coffee shop. And I'm I'm sure they looked over at me and like, I'm, I'm just a writer, you know, <laughs> it's like, what do you say? But I, I love the emotional journey. I love the, 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 the writing of it, the, the thrill of the fun of it. Also uh, the part that grabbed my heart. And then another thrill 
is when I get to direct them. You know, when you get to, when the actors make those scenes, those characters come alive. So you've got something on, on a piece of paper here and they make it, give it flesh and they give it a heartbeat and they give it character and they add a beard to it, even if it's a lady. And it's like all this kind of stuff they add to it. It's like, I wasn't thinking about, I like that. And they, and shapes and all it comes, it comes alive. And then when they get the humor, or they get that emotional moment and they grab it and they grab you in that moment. We're all on the same page. It's like, Oh, that's magic. That's just beautiful. And then I'll pick somebody, John, John Campbell or Connor Savoca or uh, Zachary Horner, d- 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 different, different people like that are, are writing music. And it's like, and they, they bring it out. And then the sound design, I've got amazing sound designers uh, that, that bring out the sound design. So, and I won't mention them all because there's a whole bunch and I'll skip some place. <laughs> But I love the pro- the collaboration too with other creatives. So I'm talking too much, but I'm th- I'm just thrilled. I love what I do. Yeah. And how about for you, Bob? What's what's a thrill for you in the process? Insert a little comment. Go for it. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm you're, supposed to be, you're supposed to be my guest, and I'm just like <laughs> no, 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 on. You're fine. You're great. I, okay. I, I love to you, especially talking about story. Oh man. Uh, in writing, when you talk about laughing while you're writing, crying mm-hmm. while you're writing, mm-hmm. you you just hit for me is one of the most important things which is being passionate while you're writing yes and 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 i i've mentioned this before um i believe that the passion that the writer feels while he or she is writing can be transferred to the reader yes Um, yes and i don't think it's a matter of honing like say say i'm just writing and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to hone every sentence and make every word perfect. I think there's something good about that in that you can help pacing mostly on when you're editing. But when you're looking for every word to be just the right word, uh-huh. um, you're, you're pounding out the passion that you felt while you were writing. Yes, and, yes. And, Sometimes I'll use the wrong word. You know, you know how there's, you know, there's a synonym that might be more accurate for what I'm trying to say. There are times when I will not use that perfect word. I'll use a word that's close just because of either cadence mm. or, or tone or yep. the feel. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and of course, that obviously applies to dialogue. Mm-hmm. You're going to use the words that your character would use, even if they're not perfect. Um, but this is something different. This is something like, yes, there's probably one word that is just closer to the meaning, but it just it doesn't fit the sentence or it doesn't fit the rhythm. Or, Kate, it that's in, or the character, maybe the character wouldn't say that word or whatever. Right, that's, right. that's really interesting. Right. Oh, Sometimes, so it's, a, it's not a matter of being perfect. It's a matter of being communicative Mm -hmm. of of communicating what's in your heart and in your head about that story and that character and that setting and whatever you're doing to the reader another word yeah go ahead go ahead some of the best writers i think are not the most poetic or not the ones with the biggest vocabulary they're the ones who can write something and the reader gets it gets it yeah something we talked we stumbled on here in story chat is the word truth be true and if you're true to your character uh, then you, they won't use that other synonym, synonym you know, they use that. Right. If you're true to your character, true to the story, true to your heart also, don't write stuff like, well, I got to put that in there because, you know, it's a Christian story. So I got to have a salvation scene in there. I got to mention God somewhere. So, no, oh, by the way, Jesus told 42 parables. This is heretical. Get ready, guys. Okay. Sorry, we're going to do heresy here. Okay. It's not heresy. It's what Jesus did. He didn't go anywhere without telling a story. There's something powerful about story, right? And 42 parables he told. 42 and not one has a salvation scene in it shock in fact i just wrote a little a little vignette what if jesus pitched his stories you know how jesus appeared to muslims right he's doing that now i mean literally in real life so what if he came to earth and he visited a movie studio a faith-based movie studio right and he says i'm coming back soon so i want to get my stories out there i want to give you full rights to my stories i want to turn them over to you and I'll consult with you, but I just want to turn them over to you. I'll make sure you're right, the right studio. And I can see the studio exec looking. And it's like, you know, I, I, you know, it's it's your stories are based on the best book of all time, best selling book. That's good, but we got some problems. Uh, there, there's there's no salvation scene in any any of these stories. Um, it, it, there's no scripture. I don't have any scripture. Not one word of scripture in all these stories. 
and you don't even mention the word God. And you know, I love what you're doing, but you know, it's just not going to work for us. Sorry, there's no, no room for you here at this studio. So I can, I can picture that happening with Jesus, you know, but what, I don't know why we have to wedge in, you know, with Christian stories. We have, we have to put the product placement, you know, you know, John, yeah. It, as a, as a Christian, as a writer who is Christian, you know, God knows my heart. I mm -hmm. pray before I sit down to write. Mm -hmm. God will put himself in my stories a lot better than I could. Yes. I love when he shows up. Yes. He teaches. Yeah. As I'm writing. He yes. A, he puts himself in there. I, I yes. got a letter from um, a soldier. I don't remember which, where he was, mm -hmm. but he was injured and he was in, you know, recuperating in a tent and he read comes a horseman. Mm -hmm. He wrote me and said, I came to Christ through your book comes a horseman there's there's no salvation scene in, in comes a horseman they don't talk about god very much in, in comes a horseman and the and the chapter he said i could tell you the chapter and he told me the chapter and i'm like there is nothing in that chapter that even hints at at god or the divine or or anything it's just a chapter it's it's it's, it's a chapter where my main character is looking for hope and looking to looking to lift himself up because he has to do a very difficult thing and that's it there's he doesn't wow. even look he doesn't even turn to god and say god give me that hope he is wow. just i have to do this and and i was like where did that come from and i wrote him back and said you know where did you know where did that come from and, and he basically said i don't know i read it <laughs> and at the end of the chapter i was so moved i started crying and the next thing you know i'm praying that is amazing. You're connecting with God's heart. It came through your heart and hit his heart. And it and didn't, and it wasn't like in a gratuitous way. It's I call it gratuitous Christianity. A lot of people they just shove it in. It's like, and it's and look at God. I mean, look at his art. His art is all around. It's in the sky, it's in the tree, it's in you know, a little ant, yeah. but he doesn't, you know, he doesn't sign it. You know, you you got to be watching for him, you know. And it, I, that's that's a that's a great picture. Um well, I was I was I believe that I believe that God sent me that that soldier story to encourage me i know? love that say okay okay you know good job yeah <laughs> well, well, well that's what c.s lewis said that he says you don't have to worry about in i'm paraphrasing you don't have to insert christian message here write truth if you write truth what's true in your heart your relationship with god will inform your writing and what you're saying the holy spirit will inform your writing too if you're walking in the spirit you're going to write in the spirit and it doesn't have to be on the in the logos, it's in the rhema. It's in the God-breathed word. Maybe it's not in the physical word, but there's something in there, like the hope you're talking about. Right. Um, I was writing a, a, some for Sir Knight of the Splendid Way for Lamplighter, and I was going through. Um, um, I had got drifted away from God in, in in an area, and I felt awful about it. And I was trying to. I was beat myself up about it. And this night, um, this uh, this night on this quest, he uh, he uh, is confronted by this other guy. And um, anyway, I will go into all the story, but but uh, what happens is critical moment is this Sir Knight makes a misjudgment and um, a faithful knight dies because of his lack of discernment. He, 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 there's a sorcerer knight that's after him. He didn't discern that. And because of that, somebody died. So he feels awful, feels like he doesn't want to do anything. He's like, he's just despondent. And this guy speaks to him, a shepherd speaks to him. He says, um, the path of the righteous is not determined by the fall, but by the rising after the fall. Wow, nice. rise sir constant and when i wrote that it broke me it was god speaking to me he's saying your path john is not determined by your fall it's by determined by the rising after the fall and he's right. telling me get up get up and that, that proverb you know the righteous falls seven times but rises again right um and it hit i just broke i was it was a mm. two in the morning and i called mark hamby who was an eastern you know, i called him up at two in the morning i said okay it's a johnny you okay i couldn't talk you know anyway just one of those i just love those moments that, 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 that when god shows up in your writing and it, well, and it, yeah go ahead that goes back to your saying your question you know what do i love about writing mm -hmm. that's another thing is god <clears throat> reveals himself to me through my writing 
all the time. Yes, oh, I learned so much, I'm not right? You learn about him. I'm yeah. not writing about, you know, I'm writing about yeah. some story and, and you know, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to say, okay, here's the Christian theme. And then uh -huh. I'm writing and my themes tend to be about hope. I, I yes. write a lot about hope yes. uh, and redemption. And, but in, in my writing, I just, he's, he talks to me. There are so many times I'm just writing away and I'm like, oh, and I have to stop. And I'm like, God, thank you for that. It's a, yes. Thank you for that yes. revelation. Yes. And, yes. and it, I wasn't looking for it. I, yes. I, I, you know, and then after, the fact i realized i needed that you know <laughs> it's some, some of the parts i enjoy most about writing is what i learn it's like oh i never thought about that it's like oh god thank you i'm doing the same thing it's like yeah okay let, so we talked about the thrill and the fun and we can talk more about that i, I want to hit on what don't you like about the writing what, what's something that hits you it's like oh i hate when this happens and i'll give you one <laughs> i'll give you one here's um here's what i love doing i love when i'm working with a client and i hand them an apple Okay, it's a very good to excellent apple. All right, it just needs a little polish. So I hand it to the to the client. Okay, and they say, "Well, I like that. I don't like that." And we kind of talk back and forth. And we polish the apple. And what happens is um, they put some of their ideas, and I'll we vet them too. It's like if it doesn't press, I'll tell them it's not going to work. Okay, if it's not going to work, um, and I'll I'll fight for my idea twice, <laughs> and then that's it. Uh, if they're very adamant about it, but usually we kind of work to collaborate. And what happens is the quality goes up, and that polish that that polish now comes a well polished apple. So it started very good, excellent. Now it's like shining apple. Right. Here's the part I hate, and this happens sometimes, not often. Thank God. <laughs> okay, I hand them the apple, and it comes back as a bowl of applesauce. <laughs> They rewrote it. They rewrote it, Bob. They rewrote stuff. And now it's like, no, just tell me what's wrong. I'll fix it. And then I got to rewrite the rewriting. And the, the, the underlying story is, is, is suffering because it just needs a little polish. Now I got to right. fix the fires they give me. So that's part, well, that's know, something I don't like. <laughs> yeah. And, and speaking to that, oftentimes, I mean, I know you are a careful writer. I'm a careful writer. Every word is in there for a reason. Yes. Oftentimes, we're planting seeds that pay off later. Yes. Sometimes they'll edit something. Yes. That that re either removes the the the, the plant or the seed. Yeah. Or it's not as impactful. Yes. Because they they you know they missed that, and it's like yes. well, it's the same thing. It's like no, no, because back where I planted the seed, I used this kind of verbiage. When, when it pays off, it's the mm -hmm. similar verbiage. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's those two things that hearken back to the seed. And, yes. and sometimes, it, it, and often, if you're, if you're, especially if you're dealing with um, editors who aren't writers, mm -hmm. um, they just don't get that. They don't get yes. the importance of cadence. Or the, yes. And I ran into this often as a magazine writer where uh, they, I, I won awards as a magazine writer, mostly in my mind, because I was putting a lot of my sensibility as a fiction writer into my articles. Yes. So, and, and, and they loved, you know, my editors loved them, but they wanted to tinker with it. Oh, yes. And in tinkering with it, you, I lost cadence. I yes. lost the, I lost the payoffs. I lost, you know, you, you lose something in it. I don't. Yeah. That makes me sound like I'm precious about my words, and I'm really not. I don't mind people making it better. Yes, I mind I, we all win. Get it? Yes, and they, and, and they throw something in there that just breaks. And maybe it was, and I have to look back on, on myself and say, maybe I didn't achieve what I was trying to achieve as well as I thought, because they would have got it. They would have said, oh, I want to change this, but it, it goes back to that. Or, yeah, yeah. you know, um, sometimes sometimes I think as, as far as magazine editing goes, and I, I don't see this as much in radio drama or short stories or that kind mm -hmm. of thing, or novel writing at all. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think with magazine writers, they, they want to justify their jobs. So they tinker with it. Oh, yes, like, they, oh. that's right. And this, this is going to sound very crude. Okay, I apologize up front. But I remember my friend Mark Drury talking about, yeah, they just got to pee on it to say it's theirs. <laughs> it's like, that's crude, but you know, it's, there's really some people accurate. like that. <laughs> I don't, I tell you, I don't mind, like you, I don't mind if, if they come up with an idea 
it's not my idea, but it's like, I like that. And it, everybody wins, you know, it's not my, but, but, you know, or, or, although Mark will do this, Mark Campbell will do this. He'll say, John, that, that scene, it's, it's good, but it didn't, it didn't really tug my heart. Like I was hoping to, I love a challenge like that. And so I'll go back. It's like, oh, now we're both crying. You know, so reading. But I love that. done the right way. Yes. So yes. something's not hitting them and they let you fix it. Let us figure That's, that's respect yeah. for the writer. I love that. And most of my clients are like that. If they aren't, I fire them. So anyway, yeah. I, one other thing I'm having, I'm dealing with right now is also when I write, I usually direct my shows and um, I've got a situation right now where uh, there's a, a, a certain client with a policy is like, you're no longer right. You can no longer direct your shows. It's like, oh, well, and so what happens is I'm writing this stuff for me as a director. Cause I love, to, I love to direct. Right. And I, I know the nuances, the setups, the payoffs. I know this story. I mean, I mean logically. Okay. I'm, I'm directing a story that somebody else wrote. Okay. There's a, I'm directing a story that I wrote. Which one am I more enthusiastic about? Just a logic thing. Okay. Which one do I know more about? Um, let me think. I think this one. So anyway, when b- b- the, the part that hurts is when I handed up, I had to hand it over <laughs> and I hand it over and it's, it's, a, she, you know, it's a good director, but it's like, they might not get the humor. And it's like, I'm listening to it. It's like, oh, they sure, oh, ow, that hurt. <laughs> or they didn't get, oh, they needed to push that because that's going to be th- that meaning. And so that's, that's, that part hurts when, when I, I don't mind collaborating. I love collaborating. Yeah. I love getting other, you know, other vision, other kind of stuff, well, but when they don't get you're it. you're describing is if you've ever read a director script mm-hmm. versus another script, a shooting script versus, yes. you know, something yeah. that a director did. The director knows his own shorthand, yes. and, and another and another writer doesn't. Right. So almost. It's, this isn't a criticism of you writing because I love your stories. I love your directing, and of course, mm-hmm. you know, you're writing, you're directing your stories is the perfect combination. But what I have found working with film scripts is, if I'm not working with the director, I write differently. I have to write a little more. Yes with more explanation or yes. maybe even the dialogue changes because I can't trust what's good, how it's going to be directed. Exactly. I wasn't so told it, that. So yeah. Yeah. So it's like, Oh it's no, it went to yeah. writing. You know? Yes. If you know you're going to direct also, it. Yeah. Uh, when I write like in radio drama, when I'm writing characters, I'm trusting that I'm, I'm writing for very good actors. Yeah. If a bad actor gets, oh. gets in it, that work, I was, <laughs> Really, I have to rewrite it because I can use three words and a good actor nails it and they, yep. and they communicate the whole, the, yes. everything I needed them to say in three words. If it's a bad actor, I probably have to have two or three lines to get the same oh, yeah, yeah. across. Like, like John Reese Davis, he can say three words and it's like, it's, I love peace. <laughs> and you go, wow. That's Shakespeare. Exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like and just he just loves peace. But um, okay, well, we can wrap. It's not that a bad actor yeah. doesn't get the nuance; they don't know how to communicate the nuance. Yes, and there's something that that subtext is so important. Yeah, exactly. They, when they get it, like John Reese David, he gets it. You know, or a great actor, well, they'll get it. And when you're when you're directing, and it's like we all get it. Like I get it as a writer, I get it as the director, I get it as the actor. It's like they're all connecting. We all get it. Especially humor. That's another. That's like oh, icing on the cake. I, I, yeah. That takes another uh, skill level as far as acting. We're gonna wrap up here, Bob, in just a few minutes. But just okay. as we close out, this has been so much fun. I just really enjoyed talking with you about the story, the fun of the story. Anything you, anyone, anything you want to pass along to people that are writing? We got writers listening here. So unless they're just professional listeners, I, I think they're, they're actually writers. <laughs> um, but well, then you're not writing. yeah, yeah, I think there's the writers or, or um, they got, they got, everybody's got a story in you. Anything you want to pass on to encourage them or, or bless them as there's your I, I, closing out? Okay. If I may, two things. Mm-hmm. The first thing, and this is for writers who maybe haven't got that first, you know, got through that first big project or something, you know, they're getting into it. I would say, trust yourself. Trust that you understand story. Trust that you understand intuitively how to tell a story don't keep nothing nothing against story you know podcasts like this but don't keep 
studying and studying, waiting for a light bulb or waiting for yes. whatever it is that you're hoping is going to go ding, time to write. That will never happen. And like you said, we are always learning and always studying. So yeah, keep doing that. Keep learning, keep growing, but start writing now, yes. right now. Yes. And, and if you do that, you know, just write, just write. You will, you'll, you'll write something and, and you'll look back at the last, you know, 100 pages and you'll think that's the worst thing ever. Every writer, no matter what level they are, thinks that at one time writing a novel, for example, or a long script or something, they, they, they will doubt themselves. Keep going through and, and finishing it. Mm -hmm. um, and that leads me to the second thing I wanted to say, which is I asked Neil Gaiman once, if you could tell... A beginning writer one thing to to one bit of advice what would it be he said finish things finish mm. it. don't wow. and that's part of that it is such a big deal when you finish a story and yes you can have doubts push through get that story done i mean when i started writing comes a horseman i had stories that i had started when i was 13 in a drawer and I got 30,000 words. And then another story that I started when I was 15, I had 40,000 words. They weren't finished. I had not trained myself to complete a story. And, and so that became another, another hurdle for me in writing Comes a Horse with my first book was I, I just didn't know how to finish. And mm. that's a huge thing to do. Even if you never publish, finish, finish, finish. That's good. But I'll tell you one thing, a, a, a publisher, for example, will think differently, more favorably about you. If you say, I have five completed novels that I haven't sent out, or I did send them out, but I didn't, I didn't, you know, sell them or whatever. They would rather hear that than I have 30 unfinished novels. <laughs> that's they that's a little red you, flag. <laughs> They want to, especially if you're selling, if you're getting a contract based on a portion of a story, they want to know that you know how to finish yes. and that you are going to finish. That's so good. it's not only a selling tool, but it's also mentally a huge thing. But yeah, but it, knowing that you know how to finish a story. That's good. You know, That's you know when it's done. Publishers are always telling me one of my, one of their biggest, I don't know, problems is dealing with new writers and they never know when their story is done they oh. never turn it in they miss deadline after deadline after deadline it's uh, uh, you know somebody who's published a lot of books every one of those stories i could still be writing mm -hmm. there are there are so many times when i look back on a story i'm like oh i should have done this i should have done this uh -huh. That's, I'm always rewriting those stories in my mind. Mm -hmm. I always look at a story that I've published and I said, that's the best I can do at that time. At, in that deadline, because part of excellence is, is getting on deadline. Speaking of finish, we need to. <laughs> but, but this has been so good, Bob. I just really enjoyed the back and forth. Anything else to just wrap up real quick and real quick button on anything else to say or? To no, don't give me that that opening though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> There's a nice you warning. You better just shut it down. <laughs> oh, know when you're we're, finished. <laughs> we're passionate about what we do here. Uh, we we love to write. That that shows, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great talking with you, Bob. Really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. Let, let's do it again. We'll do it again sometime. All right. Yeah. Great. And Thank you're going to be back for the seminar too. We're going to do, uh, you're going to do uh, cameos as you want. You can jump in there. We're, gonna do, <laughs> we're doing the launch seminar and I invited Bob. You can pop in anytime just to pop in. Uh, but he's that's also going to give a 30 going. minute uh, teaching on uh, crafting the ride of the story, the story structure one. So that's going to be fun. All right. Well, blessings to you all. I thank you. Uh, the, the world needs our stories and our job as storytellers is to give them hope in a world that's despairing right now. They need us. They need you. So like Bob was talking about earlier, thank you for listening to this. Thank you for reading books. Thank you for taking seminars. Thank you for doing all, all that honing, honing craft. But then now it's time to do. And the do is to write. Go ahead and write. 
get something on the page. Okay, take all this knowledge in and all this passion, what's in your heart and something you're passionate about, put it on the page because the world needs good stories and you're the one to tell it. So we need you. Keep going, keep writing. All right, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Story Chat. If you want to hear more, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. If you have any questions for John or feedback on the show, please email us at storychatwithjohn at gmail.com. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.